<laughs> okay. Do I do what? Shooting? Like photographing? Um, I would love to photograph an Eagles game. Um, but get me on the field, <laughs> right? That's the problem. No, you can't even. They stop. One time I went to a preseason game, and I had a camera with a long lens on it, and they stopped me at the gate. They wouldn't even let you come in because they won't let you have, like, professional lenses and cameras, even in the stands. So because, I guess, I don't know. Security, I'm sure. Okay, look, we're going to do one more example. Um, it's kind of what we did yesterday, but with just a little bit of a added thing to it. All right, so it's very similar to what we did yesterday. Oops, there goes my pen. Why do I keep doing that? So this is example five. Bless you. All right, so it says to solve. Okay, we're solving for x is what we're going to do. It's the same section. We just didn't have enough time to get to this yesterday, so we're going to get to it today. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to solve for this. And we're going to solve by completing the square, all right? Some of these you may be able to factor. I don't know if you can factor this one or not. Um, actually, you cannot factor this one um, because the answer comes out kind of crazy, comes out with a square root. Um, but we're going to do this by completing the square, all right? Remember, completing the square, we take that third one, right? We throw it to the other side. We fill in the gap. Right, that's what we did yesterday. But we're going to do one other thing before we do that. Before we, this is the only added thing to this problem compared to what we did yesterday. And what do you think it is, by the way? What do you think is different about this compared to what we did yesterday? The two, right, absolutely. That two right there, that coefficient to the x squared, we didn't have that yesterday. We just had an x squared, okay? So what do you think we're going to do to get rid of that two? We're going to divide it, exactly. But here's, I would do it in this order if I were you. First thing I would do, remember we said we're going to take that 5 and we're going to chuck it to the other side. Let's do that first before we get rid of the 2, all right? So I'm going to go 2x squared minus x, or 8x, sorry, plus what? Blank, right? Remember that? Because we're completing the square. We're going to complete it. We're going to put something in there that's going to make this into a perfect square, all right? So we put a blank right there. Equals. Now we're going to chuck the 5 over here, so what do we get? over here. It's a positive 5. Because how'd you get rid of a minus 5? You added a 5. So that's our first step. Everybody with me on that, right? Yeah, that was the easiest step by, by short, by whatever. What's, what am I trying to say? By far, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, now let's get rid of the 2. How do we get rid of the 2? We just said it. We divide. So we divide both sides by 2. Divide everything by 2. Divide this by 2, divide that by 2, and we divide the 5 by 2. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't come out to a nice whole number. We're going to have to deal with a fraction, but that's life, you know. It doesn't always come out even. So what do we get here when we divide by 2? We get an x squared minus what? 4x plus a blank equals 5 over 2. Don't change it to 2 and a half, 2.5. Don't do that. Keep it 5 over 2. It's a lot easier doing the math when you keep it 5 over 2. Make sense? All right, now we've done that. That wasn't that bad, right? We just added a five divided by two, no big deal. We did put the plus the blank thing here, all right? So that's really important for completing the square. Now we're ready to complete the square. We're ready to put something in here that makes this into a perfect square. So I can just put a parentheses and a squared on the outside. So we talked all day yesterday, well, all class period anyway, yesterday about how to figure out what goes here. How do we figure out what goes here? We take the middle one, divide it by 2, and then square it. Okay, That's our little formula, right? That's the little pattern that we do. Let's do this in our head. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So that goes right here. So we add a 4. By the way, will this ever be a minus? Exactly right, because it's always going to be plus. Because, and that was the next question I was going to ask, is why is this always going to be plus? Because in order to figure out what goes here, we take half of a number, then we square it. If we square a negative, we always get a positive. If you square a positive, you get a positive. So this will always be positive. So I can always put plus blank. Make sense? Okay. 
Gage, you have a question? I answered it. Now, I can't just add a 4 to the left side just arbitrarily. What do I have to do? i got to add a 4 to the other side. Now, this is a fraction, so I'm going to put it over 1. Is that all right? This is all familiar, right? Nothing too crazy. All right. Let's scooch it up a little bit right here. Give me some room. Now, I completed the square. I made this so that it's the perfect square. So now, this thing right here, I can write as a perfect square. What does that mean, a perfect square? It means a parentheses and a squared on the outside. So what goes inside here now? X. Now, how do you know what the sign is in the middle? This is always going to be plus. This one could change depending on the problem, right? So whatever this sign is, that's what you're going to put right there. Can you remember that? Because this one's always going to be plus. This is the only one that could change, right? And so depending on whatever that sign is right there, that always goes here. So if it was a plus, you'd put a plus. If it's a minus, you'd put a minus. What goes right here? Two. How did we figure out that was a two? Well, two ways, right? Or one of two ways. You could just take the square root of that, which is two, or you could take what? Half of this one, which is also a two, isn't it? All right, so either way you want to get that two, it's either you take the square root of that or you take half of that. So that looks kind of nice now, doesn't it? Equals. Hmm, what about this, though? we got to add these fractions. For some of you, this is the hardest part of the whole problem. All right, let's find a common denominator. i got two and one. What's my common denominator? It's two. I didn't do anything to that, so that just stays a five. What did I do to one to get a two? Multiplied it by two. So I multiply that by two, and I get what? An eight. What's five plus eight? So it's 13 over two. That's what five halves plus four is. Everybody see that? Because four is eight over two. Eight over two plus five over two is 13 over two. And now, this is like the first thing we did yesterday, isn't it? Remember we kind of reviewed a little bit yesterday? This is the very first thing that we did. So I want to solve for x. What am I going to get rid of? Am I going to get rid of the squared or am I going to get rid of the minus two first? The squared. Get rid of the squared first because everything in here is being squared. Okay? How do I get rid of a squared? Square root. Do I have to show the square root over here? Nah, just it's cumbersome. It gets in the way, right? So, but I know what's going to happen to that squared. It's going to cancel out. So I'm going to put x minus two equals. Now, what did I have to do over here though? I got to take the square root of this, and what do you put in front of it? Plus or minus. Okay? You with me on that? So let's just write it. We're going to, we're going to do something to simplify this. This is a little bit... I can't remember if we did this in here or not. Did we simplify? Yeah, we did this, didn't we? Yeah, because we said we can't have a square root on the bottom. I remember doing that stuff. Yeah, so we have done this, so it's not brand new. But I'm going to write it like this for right now. One more step and we're kind of done, except we still have to simplify this square root. Okay, but I've kind of got x by itself after this next step. What do I do to get x by itself? Add a 2. So where am I going to add that 2? Do I put it over here on the end? No, not usually. We just want to kind of keep it consistent, make it look a little nice. Um, I mean, you can put it over here. It's fine. But most of the time, we'll put it up front. So it's 2 plus or minus this thing right here. But let's not write anything just yet. Let's simplify this. Because technically, I can't keep it the square root of 13 over 2. All right? Because we talked about that earlier in the year. We got to simplify that radical. So we could rewrite it. So oh, here's off to the side. I'm going to write it off to the side. So the square root of 13 over 2 is equal to, do you remember the rule for this? It's the square root of 13, and it's also the square root of what? 2. So I'm going to write it. I'm going to split it up. I'm going to take the square root of 13 over the square root of 2. Is this coming back to you? Yeah, we did this. So aren't you glad we did that review stuff? Because if you didn't do that review stuff, you would have never seen this. Can we keep it like this, though? What's, what's the problem with this? Why is that not simplified? That's right. You can't have a radical in the denominator. Okay, So you got to get rid of that radical, that square root. How do we get rid of that square root? Not square it. 
we multiply by just itself. Because if I have a square root and I multiply it by itself, basically I'm just squaring it, aren't I? And that gets rid of the square root. So how do I get rid of a square root? I multiply by itself. That'll get rid of a square root. It's that simple. But I can't just do that on the bottom. I've got to do it on the top. Now, this is not the same rule where I say, if I add a 4 here, I have to add a 4 over here. It's not the same rule. What is the rule? The rule is the square root of 2 over the square root of 2 is just a what? It's a 1. And I can multiply anything by 1, correct? All right, so a lot of people think it's the same rule. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other side. It's not, okay? I multiplied the same thing on the top and bottom because it's just a 1, and I'm, allo I'm allowed to multiply by 1. All right, that's just a... Uh, anyway, I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> Let's figure out what this is now. Remember what I, why I did this? I, I multiplied by a square root of 2, so it would get rid of the square root. So what's the square root of 2 times the square root of 2? It's just a plain old 2. Because technically it's the square root of 4, but what's the square root of 4? It's just 2, isn't it? Okay. What's this on top? Well, what's 13 times 2? 26. So it's just the square root of 26. So this right here, the square root of 26 over 2, is the same exact thing as the square root of 13 halves. If you wanted to put it in the calculator and test it, you can, whatever your decimal is. It's the same exact thing, all right? So this is a much better way to write it. And this is the way I'm going to make you write it, okay? Because if you don't, you're not going to get credit for it. That right there is your answer. And we'll circle it. What do you think? There might be some like this. There might be some like this. That's why I want to do this first before I actually officially assign the homework. What do you think? Yeah, this one was a little, had a couple extra steps. I mean, the dividing by two part, was that really a big deal? No, nah, that wasn't a big deal. It was getting this when it came out to a fraction. Yeah, that was, that was the part that you had to think about a little bit. But hopefully you wrote this down, and then when you do the homework, what do you do? Refer back to your notes, right? That's why you take notes, okay? So you can refer back to it, all right? It's too much trouble going through the video and finding out where I taught it and then watch me teach it on the video, all right? It's way better if you just look at the notes that you wrote down and then you see all that stuff. You're like, oh, okay, I see what he did there. I'm going to do the same thing on the homework. Everybody good? Yes. All right, let me write the homework down. I know I gave it to you already, but I'm going to write it down. So it is uh, section 1-2. And I think it's B. I think it's the second part. And it's page 107. Numbers 35 to 46. Now remember, this is the first time all year, I think, you're going to do them all. You're not just doing the odds. Okay, you're doing them all. And, uh, yeah, that's your homework right there. So you got, what, 15 minutes? You got 15 minutes on Wednesday. Or it's quarter after, right, on Wednesdays? All right, so you got 15 minutes. Let's get started on it. Keep your notes out. I'll walk around if you need some help. Let's everybody work on it. Okay, you do have 15 minutes. This is not just a time to close everything up. Just sit there and wait till class is over. Let's actually work on this. Everybody good?